fans, El Stevo here, hope you're all good out there and you've had an amazing weekend. I've had a really good weekend myself, even better now, I've just watched episode 9 of Westworld. Let me just have a look, because I've forgotten what the title is, The Well-Tempered Clavier. What an episode. Um, a few speculations have been confirmed. Uh, one speculation, <coughs> excuse me, um, is hanging in the balance by Fred, we'll find out next week. Uh, I've got my daughter here on camera duty. Hello, Millie. <laughs> it's a lovely sunny autumn day here in the UK. It's about 20 past 10, a little bit earlier than usual, guys. Uh, so here is my review of the well-tempered clavier. Uh, clavier, clavier, I don't know. <laughs> so, finally, after the reveal that Bernard was a host, we revealed that we found out that Bernard was, in fact, a complete recreation of Arnold, which leaves me theory wise two for two at the minute i think william and man in black is pretty much confirmed so that's three for four the only one that we've got left multiple timelines that's four for four and then all we've got left really of course is dr ford being a host which is hanging by a thread after this episode guys um if he is then Arnold is more clever than we think. The scene where Dr. Ford gives Bernard, Bernard the chance to stay with him. Um, Bernard chooses a different path, unfortunately, and Ford um, leaves him to blow his brains out and he does it in the old narrative style. Obviously, Maeve's uprising continues apace. Her, she um, got Hector. The scene where she decided to burn her and Hector while they were fucking was pretty damn awesome. We didn't get, <coughs> excuse me, as much of Tandy Newton in this episode, but what we did get was absolutely outstanding. Again, the scenes with her and Bernard uh, were pretty damn good. Um, her showing that control and then, sorry for the slurping, her showing that control and then of course, um, basically getting her to clear her to go back into the park. Uh, was great and then obviously Bernard went on his little mission he thought he had Ford by the balls with Clementine and stuff and obviously you're thinking maybe just maybe um, Ford has been cornered but as it turns out like I've said in many of my other videos before Dr Ford is 10 steps ahead of the game they made a point of sh not showing Abernathy in that basement room well done darling um, and then, of course, we had Dolores going and finding um, Escalante, uh, the buried town, going down to the old room where she used to speak with her creator, Arnold, realising that it was all memories. Obviously, we know for a fact now that her time with William was in the past because when, when Man in Black... Right, I'll explain this so it's very, very clear for everyone out there. When, in the first episode, when Man in Black drags her into the barn, he gives her trauma and she runs out and then it cuts to her joining William and Logan. When Logan stabs her in this episode and she runs off, it then cuts back to her in the present. So literally, that whole time, from episode 2 was it, all the way through to episode 9, with Dolores, William and Logan... That was in the past, and when we cut back to Dolores, she is basically just left that barn, or she is on the mid journey from that barn back to Escalante. So that whole storyline with Lawrence and William and Logan was all in the past. That is fact. That is established fact now. There is no two ways about it. That is established fact. There's no other way that can be explained. No other way. I hope that explanation is good enough for you guys, but the multiple timelines theory is 100% confirmed. When Dolores comes out of the church at the end, and William walks in, and she, um, Man in Black walks in and she's really scared, that is present time, and Man in Black is William. There, there's no two ways about it now, I, I, it's confirmed in my mind, there'll still be people out there going, <laughs> but it's true, it's confirmed. Very interesting when Teddy was killed and then of course then of course Charlotte came to see uh, William and she was like 
uh, he was like, I don't like the uh, the interaction being broken and stuff like that. I mean, you don't do that, do you? And um, she wants his vote to get Ford out of out of the company, get him vote him off. Uh, he said he's not bothered because he's found what he's looking for, and obviously he knows that he had to go and find Dolores in Escalante. Um, obviously he's betrayed Logan in that timeline, so we'll see how that timeline comes to a conclusion. I believe that timeline will come to a conclusion with William killing Logan, or Logan dying, and that's why William's partner is miserable for 30 years, and that's why she kills herself, because the truth will out. I hope that explains it pretty well for you guys. Um, wow, that was some episode. I mean, I've, I've covered pretty much the major points there. We didn't see any of Felix tonight. It was such a good episode. And the way that they did it through Bernard's memories and Dolores' memories. In fact, the way they've done this whole show through memories and stuff is really, really great. And this episode was just brilliant. I'm so looking forward to the finale to see what happens with Maeve and Hector and Aban them trying to smuggle Abernathy out and what sh what will Charlotte do. But anyone who thinks that William and the Man in Black are going to meet up in the final episode and they're going to be in a scene together, I'm sorry guys, it's not happening. It isn't happening. Multiple timelines is confirmed. 100% confirmed. There's no two ways about it. William is the Man in Black. When Logan gave him the picture which is the picture that Abernathy finds all those years later and no one knows where the picture came from that is William's wife that's the man in black's wife so that's that's pretty much it guys um, for the theory wise uh, I want to thank all the new subscribers for uh, for joining over the weekend the comments have been brilliant uh, my man Adam I had a good chat with him again yesterday I uh, really appreciate your comments buddy, I really appreciate the conversation. Um, Danny from the Facebook page, if you're watching this, really appreciate the conversations I've with you as well buddy. Um, these conversations really do form the basis of my um, my theories and my reviews um, and I will never take 100% credit if the idea wasn't solely myself. I'm not, uh, I'm, not some, I'm not an idea thief. If someone gives me an idea, I will credit them for it. But this episode, um, well, uh, one f f good thing about Westbrook, my daughter, um, bless her, she sits with her tablet with her headphones in while I watch Westworld on a Monday morning. And um, when the theme tune comes on, she sits there whistling it. She doesn't watch the show. She's only young, so it's not really material for her. But she would sit there going... <laughs> and it's actually really funny to see her do it. I might record her doing it one week, but... Yeah, she loves the horses and stuff at the start and the piano playing. But, yeah, this week's set is really good. I'm glad that they haven't slowed down with Westworld. I'm glad that it's continued a pace. And they've they've really... all. It's not like Lost, where it was just mystery after mystery after mystery. Westworld, they've given us the mysteries and they've answered them all. For me, there's only one my two mysteries left now. Who's Wyatt? They think it's going to be Dolores, you know. And is for the host and I'm I was 95% certain on Saturday I'm 85% certain now I still think that Dr Ford is a host but I'm gonna do a video later in the week um, find finale predictions basically uh, so I hope you'll all join me for that Westworld killing it so pleased for season two I bet we're gonna have to wait 80 months for it though but hey ho good things come to those who wait hey guys but yeah, for now, the well-tempered Clavier. Uh, this is El Stevo. Catch you on the flip side, guys. Peace.